I thought it would be worth taking a look at one of the more recent uh, uh, RGB colour changing lamps. And this one, uh, it's quite convenient. It's got this uh, Bainet Cat base to the UK. Although having said that, it's very clearly using that modular system whereby they can just put on any cap they like. And when it's plug first plugged in, it automatically goes into a colour changing sequence, which is slightly annoying. I would like it if it had kept the original, uh, you know, the last setting it had. But once you've plugged it in, you can, uh, theoretically, if you choose a colour like, say for instance, a turquoise colour, uh, then if you turn it off at the, the remote control, then when you turn it back on again, it does come on at that setting. Uh, if I turn it on and I select white, which is the highest output colour, the power meter indicates about 2.4 watts. So um, it's not mega powered, but it's okay. It's fairly. It still puts out a visual, you know, a visual amount of light. So you've got the usual functions. You can uh, choose a specific colour. It's not really terribly sensitive to the remote control. Uh, and once you've chosen that colour, well, let's choose white and do it. Uh, you can then use the remote control to nudge the intensity up or down. So if it's going to do it, is it going to do it? No, it's actually swamped out with its own light. That That's a bit annoying. Oh, it really isn't responding. How crap is this? Uh, hold on, I'll just give the remote control a slight adjustment. Is that better? Hmm. No, it's still not responding to its own remote for the intensity control. That's really crap. Yeah, it, it's not very impressive. I don't know if it's just maybe a, a low battery supplied in the, the unit when it arrived. But um, it's got the colour selection that you can choose specific colours. Mm like that. Or you can actually choose uh, various fading effects, which are very simple. It's just sort of, sort of red, green to blue type effects. But anyway, let's uh, let's open it up. And this is where uh, I actually started recording this video and cracked the skin in the knuckle again because I was like trying to open it up. Uh, and also I cut the skin in the hand because this is super sharp. It really is razor sharp, uh, this, just so you know. Uh, so let's is this just going to pop off? Or I don't see a thread in, in hindsight, so let's uh, try just popping it off with a screwdriver. may not work. I don't know if this is in a thread or not. Hmm. Is it a thread? It does seem to be rotating. I'm just weary of cutting myself again. It's just rotating. It's not going anywhere. Let's use a bigger screwdriver to try and just gently prise this off without bursting anything be able to do that without bursting anything. Not sure if I am. There it goes. So inside we have a standard sort of three watt style RGB LED. We've got the infrared remote control chip there. Three wires coming through from the other side. Tell you what, I'm going to take a picture of this, right? Uh, and we'll zoom up and take a closer look at it. So here's a closer look at the circuit board. We've got the negative coming on from the power supply. We've got the positive coming on from the power supply and it's five volts and it goes straight to the positive connection of the LED. Plus it also goes via this 47 ohm resistor down to this capacitor and it powers both the infrared sensor and the chip. I'll turn this around so it does correlate. Uh, when the chip turns on the transistors, um, the output pins of the, the chip here uh, drive these transistors which are called A2SHB and uh, they, is it a B? I think it's a B um, and they are connected directly unusually the transistors, it would normally be a resistor and then the transistor but in this case the uh, control pins, the negative pins of the LED are going via the transistor and then via a resistor and they're going to the negative rail which means that uh, as the transistor's turned on, effectively it's, uh, I presume, a gate voltage will float up. Uh, I'm not sure why they've done it that way. But the red LED, because it's got a lower forward voltage, it's got a 24 ohm resistor, and the uh, green LED has an 18 ohm resistor, and the blue LED has an 18 ohm, 18 ohm resistor as well. Uh, the white wire is to monitor the power supply. It turns out this has, I was trying to work out what that was, the voltage on it was approximately 2.5 volts. And the reason for that is that if you power it up, uh, it goes into this fast colour change mode. If you then disconnect it and power it up again, it goes into a slower colour change mode. If you disconnect it and power it up again, it just stays red. Do it again. 
it stays green, do it again, it stays blue, and do it again, and it stays white. So it does have the facility to control it remotely by turning it on and off at the wall, or, or at the uh, light switch. So if I then take a look at the power supply inside here, which is wrapped in Captain Tape. So let's say uh, unwrap that and then gingerly prod the electrolytic terminals before I go any further here. Let's uh, use an insulated screwdriver since I'm holding the rest of the circuit board. Yeah, that'll do. Finger test. Yeah, that's it dead. So here's the power supply, which is effectively a 5 volt power supply. don't see any feedback. Uh, here's the output capacitor, here's the input capacitor. So what have we got here? We've got a little chip here, which is probably, is it going to be a bright power? Is it going to be? Oh, it's anonymous. That's annoying. No number. So, incoming supply, bridge rectifier, uh, a little capacitor down there, which may actually be part of the snubber network across the primary. I see two diodes in the output. Um, the power, the 5 volts is across this electrolytic capacitor, which probably has one of the diodes going to it. And the other diode is probably, let's get the meter and find out, going to the white wire. So to, it's basically a rectified but unsmoothed... Um, output to the chip. So let's uh, probe about. I'm guessing that one of these helps if you actually put it to continuity. That would really help quite a lot. Uh, one of these is going to the positive and the other one is probably going to the white wire. Where's the white wire? The white wire is over there. So that would be from there, I'm guessing. Or is that from the other end of that diode? Or is it just not, uh, not smooth completely? Hold on. May, I think maybe these two diodes are in parallel. No. Uh, unless I can't get my probe actually in there. It's just a wee bit too inaccessible. Um, what is that diode doing then? Is the output to the white wire just going from the other end of that first diode? Unfortunately, it's just too tight to get the probe in. But what I do know is that the output in the white wire was sort of 2.5 volts, which suggests uh, that it is basically ground up. It's the output that's being unsmoothed so it can monitor immediately that it's going the actual... Oh, hold on, it might actually be straight onto the output pin of the transformer then. So uh, if that's connected to negative... That... No, it is definitely going via a diode, I think. Yeah, that's definitely going via a diode. Okay, so yeah, so it's it's generating the 5 volt supply, which is, it's not got any feedback that I know of. Oh, that's actually, the output is going over its reference directly to the, that side, is it? Hold on, I'm just going to probe that out, because I've been poking about in the circuit board. I don't think it is isolated as much as I'd like it to be. That's uh, going around to there. Oh, that might be some form of feedback, but uh, quite a scary feedback um, onto the primary side of the circuitry. Yeah, it looks like it's taking a feedback straight to the pin of the chip. Silence as Clive probes about because he's just discovered something. It's quite a high value resistor. So it may actually be providing some sort of feedback. Oh, you know what? Actually, it's providing a... It's got a resistor. Uh, 105, so that's uh, 1 megohm. It's actually got a 1 megohm resistor too. 
the main incoming supply. I wonder if that's actually as an alternative to class Y2 capacitor, that the negative is just connected there for interference suppression purposes to provide a path back for the small amount of current that's going to leak across. But that is a very small resistor, so it's a bit uh, shady. It's, I'm not sure what its voltage rating is going to be. And then again, they use them across uh, the capacitors, that size of resistor in the uh, capacitive droppers. I do like the housing of this lamp. Uh, it's very it's spherical. When that cover's on it, it does feel like a ball. Um, but it's got this, if you look at the sharpness there, it's the shape of the fins is such that it really is sharp. It feels like a sort of blade when you run your hand across it. And, well, I don't know if you can see that. The fingers all a wee bit chaffed up from where I was trying to. Yeah, it's it's horrible. Yeah, it's, so uh, if you do get one of these style of lamps, just keep in mind that if you're trying to part the lid off at this sort of patterned lid and it's got this spirally sort of, sort of thin, this sort of sunburst fin effect, just keep in mind it is quite sharp. It does cut. Um, so it's interesting enough. Uh, shame that infrared remote control is just not very... You know, I don't know if it's... I checked the battery in the infrared remote control and it seems, well, you know, it's putting out three volts and it's delivering plenty of current. So it may just be that it's not a terribly sensitive uh, receiver on the unit. Um, but uh, who knows? Or maybe I was too close, but I don't think that would be the situation. I don't know if it would work further from... better from further apart, further away. I suppose there's one way to find out, and that's to curiously fold these components down. This is going to end in tears, and it? it's going to be a mighty bang, and it's going to disappear in a puff of smoke. Oh. Yeah, I think I'll unplug this from here before I try plug it in. Yeah. Right, let's plug that in. And then try it from a distance. Oh, you know what? It's actually working better from a distance. So if I turn that on, blue, cyan, yeah, it's working better from a distance. So, and the dimming just has one, two, three, three intensities. So yeah, it turns out, uh, I just precariously unplug this, right, okay. It turns out that maybe I was too close and it was maybe swamping the infrared receiver. Um, yeah, it's an interesting little light. It's, it's basic, it was cheap, generic little thing and it's interesting that it's got that extra function, the white wire coming in that uh, provides a signal directly to one of the input pins in this chip. It's also notable that it does have a position for another chip, but I don't think it's a memory chip. But it's also got a position to actually take a longer chip that might have memory functions. I'm not sure why they've got the, the multiple footprint. Maybe it's just for manufacturing versatility. But yeah, interesting enough, it does work. I, I feel better now that I've gone from a distance. I, I'm not going to criticise it for its sensitivity now because obviously I was just too close and it was swamping the infrared receiver a bit. But um, yeah, interesting little lamp. Little update because I've now discovered what's controlling the white wire and what that other diode's for. The other diode was not anything to do with the secondary side. The the second diode there was to do with the snubber network and the transformer. And the white wire, it also explains that one mega ohm resistor and the fact that there were traces going back over to the primary side. It turns out there are two traces going over to the primary side. One of them is, uh, well, I'll sh show you, I'll just trace that over to, with the meter. The white wire is connecting via a 1 meg ohm resistor. So if I go onto this white wire connection here, it's a bit footry, but I can get there. It's going across to a resistor here, which then connects directly to the main side. And what we've got here is this, this is the control circuitry, I've just uh, abbreviated it, the transformer. And then this generates the 5 volt supply. It's the single diode charging this capacitor here, and this little load resistor and that generates the 5 volts. The 0 volts was connected to one leg of the mains via a 1 mega ohm resistor, and the white wire was connected to the other leg of the mains via a 1 mega ohm resistor. And what that means is that uh, it was connected directly to the input of a pin uh, of the chip. And if that's a standard process or a logic gate, that will have a protection diode. So although the voltage of that is going up effectively, in our case, to 240 volts, um, it's current limited by that resistor, and there'll be that little protection diode inside going up to the 5 volt rail, which would cap it at 5 volts, so it wouldn't exceed about 5 volts um, maximum. And because when I measured it, it came in on the meter at about 2.5 volts, 
That's because it's uh, it's going to a maximum of 5 volts for roughly 50% of the time. It's actually chopping on and off with the mains waveform. So um, that explains the 2.5 volts. And it also means that as soon as you turn the power off, even briefly, um, at the wall, it can detect the sudden loss of that uh, pulse that it's getting. The, in this case, it would be a 50 hertz pulse. It will see that disappear long before this capacitor is discharged. Although I did notice if you'd switched it on and off too quickly, it didn't seem to detect it. It really, you had to wait till the LED cut out, um, which does suggest the capacitor was almost, you know, it was discharging to a fairly level, low level. But um, yeah, that kind of explains that then. So an interesting little lamp with some interesting circuitry.